The night in Oimiakon feels like a metal world, cold enough to bite through skin. The wind cuts like a knife, and every breath turns to ice before it leaves your lips. Out here, in cold 71 degrees below zero, even silence feels hard, like steel. A man steps inside his small wooden room, and the walls seem to pull in trying to hide from the cold outside. He brushes frost off his lashes and feels his cheeks go numb stone cold like a frozen river. Still, he has to sleep. Everyone does. But sleep is dangerous when the cold can crack metal. So how did the Yakut survive nights like this without any modern gear? How did they stay warm when the world tried to freeze them? Out here in Yakutia, winter doesn't just arrive, it digs in. For months, snow stacks up like white stone, and the wind, it cuts like a blade. On nights 60 and 70 degrees below zero, regular wooden houses don't stand a chance. The cold slips through every crack. The warmth gets swallowed the moment it rises. That's the problem the Yakut faced, a fight they could never win head on. But they learned something that changed everything. They learned to trust the ground. Under the snow sits a layer of frozen earth called permafrost, hard as iron, but steady. No shaking, no buckling in the storm. The Yakut realized that the earth itself could block the stalling winds and hold a stable temperature, something wooden walls could never do. It was ancient intelligence passed quietly from winter to winter, so they built the Urasa, a half-buried winter hut shaped by the land. They dug it low into the ground, wrapped it with thick grass roofs, and made the door small so small you had to bow to enter. Inside the walls curved in tight warm, forming a kind of natural heat pocket. A quiet warm nest waiting in the dark. And the payoff. No wind. No heat loss. Warmth that stays the whole night. In modern homes, your thermostat drops 5 degrees, and you already feel the pinch. But these people slept through nights deep below zero. In a room, the earth was holding together. That's not luck. That's knowledge. The Yakut understood their climate better than most of us understand our own houses. And the ground beneath their feet became the silent shield that helped them make it through the coldest nights on earth. In Yakutia, everyone knows one rule never sleep close to the ground. Because the ground isn't just cold. It's permafrost, frozen earth, that steals heat faster than fire can give it back. If you lie on it, even for a few minutes, your body heat disappears like someone pulled the plug. The cold rises through your clothes, through your bones, and turns the night into a metal world. That was the problem. A simple bed wouldn't save you. A blanket wouldn't save you. Because the moment your body touched that frozen floor, the warmth was gone. But the Yaka discovered something clever, something passed quietly through their winters. They learned to build layers, not just a bed, an entire microclimate. They started with a wooden frame to lift the body away from the frozen ground. Then came the dry grass, soft and warm, a natural cushion. On top of that, a thick hide blocking the cold before it could rise. Then felted horsehair packed tight like a warm secret. And finally, a fur blanket heavy and calm like a sleeping animal. Five layers, five shields, five steps between you and the cold that swallows light. And the payoff. No cold creeping up. No moisture building. Heat stays where it belongs, right next to your skin. Your thermostat at home drops a few degrees, and you already shiver. But these people slept through Arctic inversion nights deep below zero with nothing but grass hide and wool. And they woke up warm. That's not luck. That's ancient intelligence. A handcrafted heat nest that turned natural materials into the first insulation mattress on Earth. And this was only the beginning, because the real magic of their warmth still waits under the next layer. In the coldest corners of Yakutia, a simple wooden wall is no match for the night. When the temperature drops to 70 below heat, doesn't just escape. It runs. It slips out faster than the body can make it. The room shrinks in on you. The air turns sharp, and the silence feels hard, like steel. That was the problem. A house built from wood alone couldn't hold warm air for more than a heartbeat. 
The cold outside was too strong, too hungry. But the Yaket found an answer in an unexpected place, the mane of a horse. Horsehair, when felted and pressed, becomes something close to magic. It doesn't freeze, it doesn't hold moisture, and it traps warm air inside tiny pockets the way nature designed it. That's ancient intelligence knowledge wrapped in the fibers of an animal that stood beside them for thousands of winters. So they layered it, three to five centimeters of thick, dense felt packed behind walls, under beds, anywhere warmth might slip away. The horsehair formed a quiet shield, turning every room into a heat nest, soft on the inside, strong on the outside. You could press your hand to it and feel a gentle warmth, like a small secret glowing behind the wall. And the payoff, warm, dry, durable, no frost creeping in, no dampness turning to ice, just steady heat held in place through the longest nights on earth. You complain when your living room dips to 65 degrees, but these people slept through Arctic inversion nights colder than anything most of us will ever feel because horsehair of all things guarded them. A material born from the land, shaped by their hands, a silent hero of Yakutia's nights, and we're only getting started. In a closed winter hut in Yakutia, fire is both a friend and a danger. You can't let it burn all night because the smoke stays trapped inside, the oxygen drops, the air grows heavy, and a warm room can turn deadly before sunrise. But if you put the fire out, you lose the only real source of heat. And at 70 below, the cold doesn't walk in, it slams in. That was the problem every family faced. A painful choice breathe or freeze. But the Yakut, guided by knowledge, passed through countless winters, discovered a different path. They built the Saka stone hearth, a huge stove with a thick stone core, not for burning all night, but for storing the heat. Before sleep, they fed the fire hard, really hard. Flames roared, stones glowed, the room filled with a soft orange warmth, the kind that feels like a secret hiding inside the walls. Then they closed the stove. No flames, no smoke, just the slow, steady release of heat for six to eight hours. It was the first thermal battery, primitive, simple, but unbelievably effective. And the payoff, no smoke, no choking air, and warmth that lasts deep into the night. Your house loses heat if the thermostat drops two degrees, but these people slept through nights colder than anything on the planet with nothing but stored heat inside a silent block of stone. A stone hearth shaped by their hands held the line when the world outside tried to freeze every breath they took. This was one of the reasons they survived the coldest nights on earth and they still had stronger tricks waiting in the dark. In the deep cold of Yakutia, your body is the last fire you own. And even when you sleep, that fire has to stay alive. But ordinary clothing, out here, it freezes stiff in minutes. Moisture locks in, heat leaks out, and the cold sharp enough to feel like it's biting through metal winds every time. That was the problem. How do you keep body heat from vanishing into the frozen air? The Yakut knew the answer because they understood their climate better than anyone. They learned that warmth comes in layers. Not one thick coat, but two different worlds working together. Inside against the skin, they wore reindeer fur, soft, warm, and full of tiny hollow hairs that trap heat, like an old secret passed down through the winters. Outside, they covered it with a shell of horsehide, dense, tough, naturally windproof, a shield against the stalling winds of Oymyakon and the radiation frost that crawls across walls at night. And the magic was in how these layers work together. Warm inside, stable outside, no freezing moisture between them. It wasn't just clothing. It was a personal furnace, a moving heat shelter built from the gifts of the land. Your winter jacket loses the battle when the temperature drops 20 degrees. But these people slept in cold 70 below zero and woke up warm. No frost on the inside layer, no ice crust on the sleeves. Just a steady silent pocket of heat pressed close to the body. This double layer system, fur and hide, was their survival insurance. 
a quiet guardian wrapped around their shoulders, holding the warmth that stood between them and the steel-hard silence of the night. In the metal-cold nights of Yakutia, even your own breath can betray you. One warm exhale, and instantly it freezes into white crystals that fall back onto your blanket, your chest, your face. When that frost melts later, it leaves moisture. Moisture sinks into fur, and once the fur is wet, its warmth dies. That was the silent danger, hiding in the dark. Your breath could undo every layer you built to stay alive. So the Yakut learned to control that breath, not with modern gear, but with instincts sharpened by generations who slept in cold 70 below. They discovered a simple, brilliant trick. They breathed downward, not forward. A tiny shift that changed everything. Before sleeping, they placed a rough horsehair cloth loosely over their mouth. Not tight, not choking, just enough to catch the warm plume of air. The cloth absorbed the moisture before it could freeze, and the redirected breath slipped downward into the bedding where it vanished harmlessly. No frost on the face, no wet fur, no stolen heat. Three short winds that meant the difference between waking warm and waking in a sheet of ice. Your house fogs up when it drops to 60 degrees. Meanwhile, these people kept their blankets dry in cold that could freeze metal solid. This was microtechnology born from survival, a tiny adjustment of breath that protected everything else. And in the silence of an Oymyakon night, with the winds stalled outside and radiation frost creeping across the walls like silver vines, one small habit kept them alive. A habit so simple you'd almost miss it, but powerful enough to guard the warmth of an entire family. In a night so cold, it feels like the dark is shrinking the room one person alone loses heat fast. The cold pulls it away, inch by inch, breath by breath. Out here, separation equals danger. That was the Yakut problem. If each person slept alone, their body heat leaked into the air, and the air hard as steel swallowed it without mercy. But the Yakut understood their climate better than anyone. They knew a truth passed quietly through the winters. When people come together, their warmth comes together too. So families slept close. Two, three, sometimes five people gathered in a tight cluster inside the Urasa. They shared blankets made of layered hides. And everyone rotated their legs toward the center building, a shared heat pool where warmth collected like a hidden treasure beneath the furs. It worked because body heat isn't just heat. It's a soft flame, and soft flames get stronger when they burn side by side, warm fast, stable warmth, long heat retention, three short winds that kept families alive in cold that would make metal crack. Your thermostat drops a couple of degrees and the house already feels uncomfortable. These families, they created a microclimate with nothing but presence, a human hearth glowing quietly in the dark. This wasn't just sleeping. It was survival through unity, a warmth built not from firewood, but from people. And in the stillness of an Oinmiyakon night, with radiation frost creeping across the walls, installing winds pressing on the hide walls that gathered warmth became a shield. A natural heat pool shaped by thousands of years of living close surviving close and trusting the old rhythm of their ancestors. Night fades slowly in Yakutia. The metal dark sky softens, and a thin violet glow slides across the roof of the Urasa like a quiet promise. The cold is still there, but something warmer lingers in the air, the memory of people who knew how to live with it. And that's the truth the Yakut carried through every winter modern gear can break. Batteries die, plastic cracks, but ancestral knowledge that never freezes. Not in this land. Not in cold 71 degrees below zero. Because survival here was never about beating nature. It was about understanding it, listening to the stalling winds, following the rhythm of permafrost, not fighting the Arctic inversion, but moving with it. Every technique you've seen tonight from the hay beds to the heat pools wasn't just a trick. 
It was a conversation between humans and the cold. And as the violet morning rises, you can feel that old wisdom glowing like an ember inside the walls. A quiet reminder that knowledge is the warmest fire we have. If you want to go deeper next time, we'll explore another Arctic secret. Either a yakut technique even older than this, or a survival skill from a northern culture that lived on the edge of the world.